a place called Satchem Head or Satchem's Head, Connecticut. And either it's just a location or it's next to the town. I mean, it, Guilford, Guilford Harbor near the town of Guilford. So 1637 is the massacre of the Mystic River Pequa. There was a skirmish between the Mohegan Indians, who were allied with Underhill and Mason, the Caucasian Europeans, and the Pequa on what is now Bloody Cove Beach, which led to the beheading of a Pequa sachem, or a chief. So sachem's head, they beheaded a sachem, a Pequa chief, and they placed his head on top of a pike or in a tree as a warning. And that's why it's known as Satchem, uh, Satchem's Head today. Satchem's Head is a tiny peninsula, 600 acres. There's the beach and a bluff and rock and forest and a salt marsh. It's twin, tranquil, remote, safe from overdevelopment by a scattering of wetlands where building is prohibited. It's the rocky coast of Maine without being in Maine, says James Quiv Livin a chef who bought the Stonehouse restaurant at nearby Guilford Harbor three years ago. It's gorgeous. It's phenomenal. So they wanted to catch Sassacus, and any Pequot that the English had encountered, they would kill. And so that's why they smashed the shit out of this one Pequot sachem near Guilford Harbor, because they were terrified of Sassacus. The spirit of Sassacus was in the air. Basically, they declared war on Sassacus and his Pequa. Uncas and the Mohegans believed that it's religious freedom. They were Puritans. They were very strict. They outlawed Christmas, and they were burning witches. So these were very uh, oppressive, very strict Christians, very strict Protestants, not Catholics, Protestants. And so these very strict Protestants, there were some... We in Bradford, but most of the people, over half of the people on the Mayflower, were here for commercial economic opportunity. Had nothing to do with religious freedom, so-called religious freedom. They wanted the freedom to be authoritarian and oppressive with their religion. So they're actually very much against religious freedom. They're intolerant of anybody else's, even other Protestants. The Church of England was a Protestant, but it wasn't good enough for them. They wanted a congressional a congregational sort of system instead of the Church of England. So they weren't even Puritans. They were Brownist separatists. 1621 feast is a green corn festival, the chief Massasoit shakedown of uh, the Bradford, William Bradford and company pilgrims in Wampanoag at the Plymouth Colony, 1621. Edward Winslow is the only person who was there and who wrote about that event specifically. He was there. He wrote home to a friend. These are his words. Pay attention. Our harvest being gotten in, our governor sent four men on fowling that so we might, after a special manner, rejoice together after we had gathered the fruit of our labors. They, four in one day, killed as much fowl as, with a little help besides, served the company almost a week, at which time, amongst other recreations, we exercised our arms, many of the Indians coming amongst us, and among the rest, their greatest king, Massasoit, with some 90 men, whom for three days we entered time amongst other recreations, we exercised our arms, many of the Indians coming amongst us, and among the rest, their greatest king, Massasoit, with some 90 men, whom for three days we entertained and feasted, and they went out and killed five deer, which they brought to the plantation and bestowed on our governor and upon the captain and others. Now, William Bradford, he's uh, the governor that Winslow mentions. He describes the autumn of 1621. Besides waterfowl, there was a great store of wild turkeys, of which they took many besides venison, etc. Besides, they had about a peck a meal a week to a person, or now since harvest, Indian corn to that proportion. So this is how they determined what all the food was served at that so-called first Thanksgiving, which wasn't a Thanksgiving, and there was no turkey. Pay attention. These are the only two quotes. These are the two primary quotes all of Thanksgiving is based upon.
Edward Winslow was there, and I don't know if he becomes a governor or what the hell he's doing at Plymouth Colony, but he's there. Edward Winslow was there. He talks about four men went on fouling, and then they said they got so much foul, it was crazy. Now, Bradford, when he talks about waterfowl, he also says there was a great store of wild turkeys. So he separates wild turkeys from waterfowl. So when he talks about fowl, fowl and turkeys are two different things. William Bradford also is talking about the general conditions of the fall. It's just general conditions in 1621, the fall. So we only actually have one primary source document, Edward Winslow, who talks about the so-called Thanksgiving meal, dinner, per, you know, with the pilgrims, the three-day festival, and, you know, the Ch King Massasoit. And what we hear here, you know, with this quote, what we hear here is that amongst other recreations, we exercise our arms. He's talking about how they went fouling. So they killed a bunch of ducks and they killed a bunch of geese after they went fouling. They were practicing their arms, so they went home and they were just shooting their guns. Many of the Indians coming amongst us, and among the rest, their greatest king, Massasoit, with some 90 men, whom for three days we entertained and feasted. And they went out, killed five deer, which they brought to the plantation, bestowed on our governor and upon the captains and other, others. That's it. Five white-tailed deer was there, some ducks and some geese, probably grain and barley, but... The Bradford is general conditions, so you can't say any of those things specifically was in the Thanksgiving. The only one primary source document that relates to Thanksgiving mentions five white-tailed deer and fowls, geese and duck. No turkey. There is no Thanksgiving and there is no turkey. Nothing else there either, right? So there was no... Uh, Snickers bar, there was no Big Mac, there was no, nothing, right? So it wasn't just no turkey, but just five deer, ducks, geese, and probably Indian corn, some barley. <laughs> That's it, right? So quit sitting there, you know, that was abundance for them. So if anything, the true story is better. The true story is better. They had few things and thought they had abundance. And so before, this is abundance to them. So before then, what were they surviving on? Just leather. Now, Pequa. Pequa is P-E-Q-U-E-T, the Pequa. But there's Pequa, Ohio, there's a Pequa, Kentucky, and there's a Pequa, Kansas. So did the Pequa, were the Pequa wiped out because it was a genocide? The Pequa War was a cultural genocide. They murdered all of them, and then nobody could. Speak the Pequot's name after the Pequot had lost the Pequot War. The few that were remaining were redistributed to the Narragansett and to the Mohegan tribes, the Sassacus, and then went up to the Mohawks, and we're going to get to what happens to Sassacus later on. But Pequot, does Pequot still exist? Does it still carry on? Are the Pequot, the Pequot, the Shawnee Native Americans, and the Shawnee, the Native Americans of Pequa, Ohio, Kentucky, and Kansas, are they the same Pequa that was over in Connecticut? They sound identical, the exact same. They're spelled differently, P-I-Q-U-A, instead of P-E-Q-U-O-T, but they spelled it Pequod before, Pequa. So it sounds identical, the exact same to me. One caveat in Pequa, Kentucky, they pronounce it Pickway because, of course, they do. You know? Locals in Pequot, Kentucky, can make everybody else feel insignificant and inferior, even though they're stupid and have bad. They probably love the Confederacy and have, you know, can't even read. Two out of five Kentuckians cannot even read or have the kindergarten or less uh, reading level. So they say Pequot is how you're supposed to say Pequot. So when you go there and you say, hey, how do I get to Pequot? And they say, you're not from around here, are you? And it's like, well, I'm actually from a couple of counties over, like I said, you're not from around here, are you? I actually am, but, oh, I hate you, I hate you. <laughs> Nevada, 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 Pequa, Pickway, Louisville, Louisville, Madrid, Madrid, uh, Versailles, Versailles, or Vers they fuck it up, man, they bastardize. 
Pequot, Kansas is named after Pequot, Ohio. So that's an easy one. Pequot is from the Shawnee language. And the Shawnee language is Othath Hiwa Pequa, translated as he has risen from the ashes, which relates to a legend of the people of the Pequot became associated with the Pequoe, one of the five divisions of the Shawnee, who were eventually known as the Pequa. This local Shawnee history was also the source of the name of the community of Shawnee. There was also the Mohegans, the Mohegan, Mohican, and so there was a slight variation. So I could easily see how they parted. They, most of the Native Americans were tribalistic and in their own little, you know, so there wasn't all the Shawnee, all the Iroquois. It was, you know, the band of Bob and the band of Sally, and that's it. So there's three or four of them. So it was actually very democratic when they would get together and elect their leadership. The Iroquois is who is racist. So when they say the Pequa High School Indians, that's racist. They take their mascot name from the local Native American history. I think if they actually were more specific, the Shawnee, I mean, if my ancestors were wiped out, wiped out but if there was a, you know, a folklore to them of being warriors, I would, that would be awesome. The high school Shawnee, so their name still lives on. To the earth, they, you know, when you speak the name of the dead to the earth, they still live on. You know what I'm saying? So Pequa, Pequa, Kansas, Pequa, Kentucky, Pequa, Ohio, Pequa System, the Quality of Service Measurement Technology of Texas Instruments. They could be Pequa, but I'm not for sure about that. Satchem is chief in Sagamore. People thought was subordinate chief, but basically Sagamore and Sachem are basically chief. They're both chief. Sagamore, Sachem. Two Sachems who had been taken by Stoughton refused or were perhaps unable to act as guides were accordingly put to death at Minunketuk, now Guilford. Winthrop says that it was this circumstance which gave the name to the point called Sachem's Head, but Mr. Ruggles, in his history of Guilford, gives a different and more interesting version of the matter. He says that during their march, Uncas, the Mohegan, and his party, party came upon a Pequa Sagamore with a few followers and immediately pursued them. The Pequas ran along the shore until they came to the eastern point, uh, eastern point of Guilford Harbor and hoping that the pursuers would pass by on the mainland. They turned off onto this little cape and concealed themselves near the extremity. Uncas, however, was too old a hunter to be seen by such artifices, and he commanded that some of his men should search the point while the others passed round to the opposite. Uncas of the Mohegans, a backstabber of the Pequots, chasing a Pequot Sagamore, and he's flanking them. The Pequots sees an enemy in the rear, swam across the mouth of the harbor, and were attacked and taken as they landed. Uncas shot the chief with an arrow, cut off his head and stuck it up in the crotch of a large oak where the ghastly trophy remained withering and bleaching for many years. So Uncas, it was the fucking Mohegans who killed the Sachem, Sachem's head because of fucking the Mohegans and the fucking Uncas. Meantime, the fleet coasted along to the westward and in three days reached the harbor on which now stands the beautiful city of New Haven. Here a great smoke was discovered on shore curling up from among the trees, and the troops landed hastily, hoping that they found they had found the enemy. They hurriedly through they hurried through the forest with all speed and reaching the spot from 1836 you had clergyman Thomas Hooker. Thomas Hooker took a hundred settlers into the Connecticut River, the Hartford, and they built uh, see, he, they came with Richard Risley with 130 head of cattle on a trek from Newtown, now Cambridge. So they came from Cambridge, Massachusetts to Hartford, Connecticut. They established Hartford directly across the Park River from the old Dutch Fort. The Dutch Fort was just established there, 1633. So 1636, did Richard Risley and Thomas Hooker just set an English fort right across from the old Dutch Fort, the Fort Good Hope? That's pretty fucking bald. That's pretty gangster, to be honest with you. So the Hartford, the English, is now sitting right across the Dutch in 1636. A hundred more settlers and 130 cattle is now in Hartford. Tataboom was slaughtered in 1634. 1634 is when John Stone was killed. Tataboom was killed. And that's when the Dutch and, I want to say, Weathersfield was set up. 
or Windsor. I think Windsor was before Weathersfield. Weathersfield is not the oldest. Shut up. Weathersfield, you're not the oldest. Get that shit out of here. Windsor's older than you. And there's Native Americans all over the place. So that's uh, bullshit. Once Tadabin was slaughtered without repercussions, the white European, the, the Caucasian, excuse me, colonists engaged in ritual slaughter. John Underhill couldn't get enough. He had one asymmetrical, bloody massacre of American natives, one after another. John Underhill, just one slaughter, one massacre after another. So it didn't stop at Mystic River. Mystic River Massacre of 1637 wasn't the 1637. This is when the Mystic River Massacre is going to happen. You have three Connecticut River towns, Windsor, Hartford, and Weathersfield. They set up a collective government in order to fight the Pequot War. So Windsor, Hartford, Weathersfield, this is going to be your three Connecticut cities. These are the towns, the city nations, which put Connecticut on the map. The Pequot tribe of Connecticut gathered for their annual green corn dance ceremony. It was essentially, they were sleeping, so this is in the pre-dawn era. The Mystic River Massacre is a horrible massacre of 700 innocent children, women, and elderly. And the Thanksgiving that was declared afterwards is a celebration, is a festival for that massacre. So happy Thanksgiving. We killed a whole bunch of children. Happy Thanksgiving. Sassicus of wine shocks. Sassicus of wine shocks. This is everything you would ever want to know about Sassicus. So wine shocks is Sassicus's village. Mystic is his village too, but he lived at wine shocks. So who are you? I'm Sassicus of wine shocks. I'm Sassicus of Wopig Wooit. I'm Sassicus of Montauk. I am the Pequot Sachem, the Pequot Chief of Wine Shocks. So Sasakuso is his, the Massachusetts word for fierce is Sasakuso. Sasakuso. So perhaps it's not Sasakis, it's Sasakuso. Either way, he's fierce. That's the Massachusetts word that Sasakis comes from. So Chief Sasakis, the one who picks up the tomahawk of Tatabim, when Tatabim was slain by the Dutch, Father Wopig Wooit Montauk was born 1516 in Connecticut. He himself was born near Groughton, Connecticut, Mystic River, Groughton, New London, Connecticut, right around there, 1560, 1536, 1539, one of those dates. He had two brothers, Sacco Wasson and Pup Pompogs. So Sacco Wasson, carry on. Sassicus's blood and his name, Sackawasson, and Pup Pompogs were both Sachems. And I think they were given to the Mohegans. So that means Sassicus might even still live on. Sassicus had four daughters. One of them was Sarah Royal Squaw. But Sassicus, unfortunately, is going to be the last of the Pequot. And the Pequot either means the destroyers or the swamp people or the people of the water that is shallow, people of the shallow water. Pequot is any member of a group of Algonquin-speaking North American Indians who lived in the Thames Valley. Pequot cultivated Indian corn. They hunted and they fished. Now, the Pequot and the Mohegan used to be one tribe, very similar to how the Lenape, Delaware, and the Kentucky Shawnee were one tribe before the infamous Grasshopper War. One boy was playing with the Grasshopper, then they started fighting, and the families and everybody, there was a fucking war. So that just shows you how the tiniest thing can you know, spin out of control and really escalate. The Lenape and the Delaware, in the Lenape, Delaware, the Kentucky Shawnee used to be one tribe. They used to be the same tribe, but because of a fucking grasshopper, they split. And united we stand, divided we fall. Same thing is going to happen with the Pequot and the Mohegan. The Mohegans are led by Uncas, and Uncas rebels against Sassacus's Pequots. Uncas didn't like that he was the Sagamore. He wasn't the Sachem after Tatabim was slain by the Dutch. After the Dukas, he has different plans in Sassicus, the Grand Sachem. And that's what Massasoit means, the Chief Sachem. So the Massasoit Sachem is just the Chief Sachem. Who's the main Sachem? The Massasoit. So we don't even really know who Massasoit, what his actual name was. And then Squanto, he means divine rage. Tisquantum, Tisquantum means divine rage. And that's kind of beautiful, I think. 
So Tisquantum's got a cool ass name. Now Uncas, he wanted to essentially capitulate to the Europeans. He was afraid of how they were going to survive. They thought that there was inevitable violence with the Europeans, and he didn't want to be swallowed up by them, so he kissed their ass. He, Benedict Arnold, the Pequot, and fucked over the Sassacus and the Pequot, who they were at one point one tribe. They were one family under Tadaboom, 